Hello and welcome back to this video series on creating SSH keys and using them to connect to cloud instances. If you're a Windows user, we already created our keys using PuttyGen in the previous video. You can safely skip this video and move on to the next one. For us Linux and Macintosh users, we'll continue on and create our SSH keys in this video. So let's begin. So I have opened here a Linux terminal. If you're a Macintosh user, the process here will be the same, except for one slight little difference that we'll go over later. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our public and our private key that we talked about in the concepts video in previous videos of the series. We'll take our public key that we've created and we'll transfer it over to our cloud instance so that using our private key on our local system and our public key on our remote system in the cloud, we'll create that SSH tunnel conduit between each system so that we can access our cloud. So the process is actually quite simple. From our terminal, either on the Apple Macintosh or on Linux like we are here, we're going to type in the command SSH keygen, and then we're going to add to the end of it that we want a bit count of 4096. Now, your default, if you do not do that, is going to be 2048, which in today's day and age is not as secure as a 4096 bit key. So we'll, we want to add this 4096 to the end so that we make sure we generate a nice secure key. When we hit enter, it's going to ask us the location of where we want to store this key. And if you can see here, my directory that it's going to be placing the key in is in the home directory for NetMet in a hidden directory called .ssh, and it's going to name it id underscore rsa. Here we can name it whatever we want. I'll leave it as default. It's not a problem to me. However, for Apple users, this seems to always place your key directly into the same directory that you created in. So we have to be cognizant of that when we're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter here. And it's going to ask me for a passphrase. Now, in the previous video for Windows, I created a passphrase by opening up a notepad and I entered in some random numbers and letters and special characters. So I'm going to go ahead for um, consistency and I'm going to use the same passphrase. And I'm just going to copy it into my clipboard. I'm going to come back to my terminal, make sure it's selected, and I'm going to right click. You're not going to see it in the terminal because it's a hidden password. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to right click again and hit enter. And it creates my SSH keys. Now, so now I'm going to change directories to my .s. I'm going to hit the tab key, and that's going to give me to my .ssh directory and hit enter. If I do a directory listing, which is an ls minus l, or in some systems you can just do a simple shorthand double l and hit enter, you'll see I have two files in here. One is my ID underscore RSA, and the other is the same name, but it has the dot pub at the end of it, which indicates it's the public key. If I do a cat to display or echo out to the screen my pub key, you'll see my full public key here is inside this file. And we're going to use this particular public key later on in the next videos to export these into the cloud or import these into the cloud so that we have our public key on our remote instance and our private key is here on our local system. Now for 
Macintosh users or Apple users, you might not need to change directories at all. You'll just go to your local directory and from here you can do that ls minus l or double l depending on which works for you. And you should see those same two files located in your directory right off of your home directory that when you open your Apple terminal, you default to. So this will conclude this video. Nice and short, very simple. I hope that this was informative. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.